Hey guys and welcome back to How to Tech. This is going to be a video about what's the difference between the Intel CPUs, the Core i3, Core i5, and Core i7. We're going to be discussing some of the main uh, categories here on what makes these chips different. We're going to be really basic here. We're not going to go too much in depth. I'm just going to give you kind of a general sense of uh, what's different with these chips and also why you're going to be paying different prices for these uh, specific chips. So. Starting first and foremost here with the most important thing is going to be the number of cores. The more cores you have, uh, basically the more processing and the faster your computer is going to be. So you can see that the cheapest chip here is going to be the Core i3 and it only has two cores compared to the i5 and the i7 which each, each have four. And then we're going to move on here to the next category which is the frequency range. And you know you can see that the Core i3 is actually um, runs higher than the Core i5 but this is a little bit uh, misleading so just to kind of explain what frequency range means let's say you're running at 3.2 gigahertz uh, this is um, basically just meaning that you're gonna be running 3.2 million clocks per cycle um, but you can see that uh, the next thing is gonna be turbo boost here and that's gonna affect these particular uh, gigahertz you can see that the i3 does not have turbo boost while the core i7 and the i5 do um, so the core i5 and the core i7 are capable of running at lower frequencies and when it's needed they can boost up to higher clock speeds when it's necessary but that's not a capability that the i3 has so it it'll run at a higher clock speed um, all the time and it won't be able to boost up to a higher uh, clock speed when needed while the i5 and the i7 maybe they'll run at a lower f frequency than the i3 but with that turbo boost they're going to be able to say I mean let's just say for instance that the core i5 is running at you know let's just say it's running at 2.2 while the i3 is running at 3.2 and maybe you need to run at you know maybe 3.9 or something so that core i3 is going to be stuck at 3.2 while the i5 with turbo boost is going to be able to boost up into those higher frequency ranges when it needs to. All right, and then the next thing we got here is hyper threading. And in the simplest terms, this is kind of a confusing thing, but um, the hyper threading basically doubles each core. Uh, so you can see that the i3 has hyper threading, so the computer will see these two cores as four. The i5 does not have hyper threading, so it's just sitting at that four initial cores and then the i7 has hyper threading so uh, windows will see this as eight cores um, it's not going to get double the speed though it's not like you're doubling your number of cores and in, in terms of the performance you're going to get uh, the hyper threading is able to get maybe a you know maybe a 15 to 20 percent ish increase in speed so this i3 it'll you know be boosted to four cores essentially because of this hyper threading but it'll still be slower than the four cores that the i4 brings or i mean excuse me i5 and then the i7 is going to be boosted to eight cores but it's not going to be you know double performance it's just going to have you know a modest maybe 15 to 20 percent gain in performance um helps out but it's not gonna you know increase it by 100 percent or anything but it's nice to have and uh so yeah and then moving on to the cache, uh, the higher number you have here, the uh, faster performance you're going to be getting out of your CPU. And essentially what the cache does is if this is a higher number, then it doesn't need to grab information as often from the slower RAM. Uh, so you can see that the i7 has the most cache here at 8 uh, megabytes, while the i5 has 6, and then the i3 is in that 3 to 4 range. So when you wrap it all up here, you get the i3. It's going to be the worst performer here because it has, most importantly, the least amount of cores. And even with that hyper-threading, it's still going to be um, not performing as well as this i5. Even though the i5 doesn't have hyper-threading, these four cores are going to be working out and being able to do more processes than these uh, two hyper-threaded cores here from the i3. And then also the gigahertz. Um, you know it's a little misleading here that the i5s are running at slower gigahertz than the i3 
because the i5 has turbo boost enabled and that means that the i5 is able to boost up into a higher frequency range when needed and that's also going to be the case here with the i7 while the i3 is just going to be stuck at um, whatever frequency that it's at it's not going to be able to boost up to those higher clock speeds and uh, and then the cache of course is going to make the i3 here a little bit slower it's going to have to grab from your ram more often which is going to slow things down a little bit and then the i7 is going to be the highest one here so the i7 you're going to get your best performance and then the i5 is going to be a slight step down from that not even noticeable much with just normal computing and I mean unless you're doing like really intensive stuff like video editing or rendering or things like that you'll notice a you know somewhat of a significant performance boost from the i7 but in general for just a you know your regular family PC you're going to be fine with the i5 and if you want to go more a budget route and you really don't you know use your computer for much in terms of you know high end things then the i3 is going to just work out just fine for you so um, I might make another one of these videos and kind of go more in depth on um, what core I recommend for you know the uses that you might have when looking for a PC and what kind of CPU you want to use but the basically just the uh, main thing of this video is just kind of explaining the differences between these processors and um, why they have different performance based on these important factors here so thanks guys for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video. And subscribe for more tech content in the future. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye, guys.